here we are uh, at our final stop um, of this trip, but it is the Garden of Gethsemane. It's where Christ uh, suffered for us. He uh, began to be in a great agony. Uh, all the Gospels record different uh, aspects of uh, what happened uh, leading up to this event. He was um, anointed by Mary and a lavish outpouring of uh, perfume, very costly, and it was so offensive. It was offensive to Judas, and he couldn't suppress it any longer, and he just blurted it out. You know, the story we're given, I, I, I think, is not so much, you know, his betrayal, um, but his inability to, to continue to mask his, um, you know, the evil within, the greed within. Uh, we can label it many things, but we, I would label it the old man. And so here's Christ now, um, you know, fulfilling all prophecy and, you know, walking towards this, uh, you know, these final days on earth. And uh, he's anointed. And Jesus said, leave her alone. You know, when they objected, he said, leave her alone. She's doing this for my burial. Let her celebrate my burial day. You know, it was all in that preparation. And I, I don't know, it was just amazing. So this, this lavish outpouring of anointing was just a, a sweet smell on him. And, uh, you know, he continued on. And, uh, of course, he has the, 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 the Last Supper which really was the first supper uh, with his first supper in the new covenant with his uh, disciples, his closest friends. And, uh, you know, they have the communion. He offered his blood to them uh, prophetically, which was going to happen very soon. He offered his, uh, his body to them. And maybe they, they didn't comprehend what was about to take place, although throughout all the scripture, it, everything is leading up to these three days. You know, so here is Jesus coming uh, after this, the communion and washing their feet and serving them. He, he comes across the Kidron Valley, uh, right, right, right below here, and, um, you know, crosses into this garden, the Garden of Gethsemane. It's somewhere on this mountain that he uh, retired often to pray. And, you know, the olive trees, there's a few original olive trees left. They're the witnesses on this earth as to what took place. And, uh, you know, uh, even without the trees, his agony was uh, recorded for us, was documented um, for us. And in this garden, I believe it's uh, where the Lamb of God was being inspected by the Father to affirm that he was without blemish and you know, no spot, and he was the perfect offering. And no one noticed this lamb because they were inspecting thousands and thousands of lambs throughout this city and you know, in preparation for the Passover. So by the time you know, he, he reaches this place, he says, my, I'm agitated in my soul. I'm, I'm heavy in my, you know, my spirit. And he was beginning to feel uh, perhaps some of the withdrawing of the Father's presence. And, you know, of course, we have uh, him singing. They sang a hymn, uh, either in the, the, the supper hall, the communion hall, you know, or on their way, but they sang the halal. And in that halal, he sang for our redemption. Jesus sang over us. Uh, we have many, many uh, testimonies from the Old Covenant, how God rejoiced over his people. He sang over them. He, you know, he danced over them. Uh, he rested in his love over, you know, over people it, anticipating what his son was going to do. He could rest in his love. In that word rest is the connotation of remembering sins no more. Not bringing any charge up against you ever because it's been settled. So you and I need to release each other from, you know, past uh, situations. And, you know, especially you, yourself, you need to release yourself from the, the past, the situations, because they're over and gone. Don't keep bringing them up and reminding God. Okay, that, that's uh, not a spirit of sonship or adoption. That, that truly is an orphan spirit. And Jesus came in this garden to agonize and uh, sweat you know, uh, drops of blood for us. 
uh, he permitted his uh, anguish to be recorded for us. He sowed in tears. He was the one who sowed in tears. Okay? He sowed in tears. Um, you can join him if you need to, but he, he actually sowed in tears. And uh, Gethsemane here is also called the, uh, the, the oil press where the Son of God was pressed in his spirit and you know, to every ounce of strength in his human body, he was, he was pressed uh, with, with agony and, you know, and, and torment. And, you know, powers of darkness were starting to come uh, against him. I believe this garden uh, should not be explained in terms of Judas or darkness of the devils. But it should be explained in terms of what heaven does or doesn't do okay so we're looking at this from not from oh you know Judas is coming with the gang and he's betraying them and you know he's gonna give him the kiss and we know the story because we already read it but we need to look at it from another angle it's what is heaven doing what is heaven not doing in this garden that that will tell us volumes of what Christ agonized you know the agony in him um, this is, here is where he became a worm and not a man. And, and some say, oh, Christ could never utter those words, could never come from his mouth. But I, I tell you, he, in order for him to take your sin, he had to become a worm, which was the lowest, it was a degradating um, thing. You know, he, he had to realize, he had to know that isolation. It's, it's like ca uh, David being in the cave alone. And crying out to God, you know, and writing his psalms and stories of, you know, I, I looked for comfort and there's no one here to comfort me. I looked to my right hand, no one is there, you know. Wow, suffering in the garden. Up until now, Jesus works and he administers the Passover. He gives... He gives and he has the luxury. He washes their feet. Um, he gives to Judas now. And everything switches for Judas. Judas is no longer in control. Judas can no longer make decisions. It's already been made. And when Jesus gives him the, you know, the, 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 the bread, he said, go do what you have to do quickly. It's already, it's already done. It's already over with. Go and do it quickly. And no one had a clue what was going on. Those who've been around Jesus three years, walked with him, the close, no one knew what was going on. They were um, confused, but that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> Jesus allowed Judas to be around him, allowed him time to repent, allowed him time to come to his senses, but um, the self-righteousness in Judah just, uh, he, he suppressed that old man as much as he could, but it finally, finally manifested. And um, so Jesus sent him out, go do what you have to do, do it quickly. And Jesus was saying, because I am ready, I am ready to suffer. I am ready. Wow. Gethsemane is not a field of study for our intellect. It is a sanctuary for our faith. You cannot understand this until you enter by faith like a child. And and ask for revelation. Revelation is uh, God coming to us to give himself away. That's what revelation is. He, he, he comes to us, he approaches us in order to give himself away. And we have, um, you know, he, Jesus is being inspected as the Lamb of God and the Father begins to, to push him away. And that's causing the agony, the agony in, in, in his soul. And, you know, knowing he, he has to face something to come. And, uh, he, you know, he, he brings three of his closest comrades with his. his you know, he, he wants human affection. And he, you know, he, he comes at, to a certain distance and he says, you know, stay here and pray. And he, he goes a stone's throw away because he, he has to be uh, alone. He has to be alone, although, although he longs for human, uh, you know, emotion and comfort. And 
console, you know, consoling he gets none. I mean, I don't, I don't know. It, it just, there's a detail, but it says something to us that he was far enough away, uh, you know, to be heard, but his disciples, they couldn't hear what was going on. Somehow in their hearts, something was blocked. They couldn't hear. They, were, they, they fell asleep. And it, it, it said again to Christ that he's being isolated. His friends aren't hearing him. They're not rushing to see what is wrong with him, what is going on. They've never seen him like this before. So it tells me they didn't hear. They didn't see. Okay, so he was, this is how far he was, a stone's throw away. I hope this one's, yeah. Uh, see, I don't know. Oh, that's, okay. All right, that was, <laughs> hope you got that one. Anyway. <laughs> You know, but from here to there, and it, it was like he was uh, roaring like a wounded lion. You know, roaring in agony. The, you know, the Son of God, he was, um, the Father was inspecting him in this garden. He's my lamb. He's my lamb. The whole city is busy inspecting the lambs. No one's noticing this lamb. No one notices. You know, he, he's agonizing and he's wrestling. It, in order to suffer, he needs strength. He needs strength to be consciously aware that he is the scapegoat, that all of our sin, the sin of the world, the conglomerate sin of the world is being laid on him in this garden. It's being pressed on him. He's in the oil press. Okay, you're not. Okay, he is in the oil press and the anointing oil was pressed out of him. Okay, if we can just picture that, you know, all of that anointing now to be poured out on his bride. The oil to be poured out on her, the fragrant oil. Okay, and th this is, you know, he, he, he began to be in the agony and uh, he was sent one angel. Not a myriad of angels, not like before, not like the thousands upon thousands ministered to him. The heavens were open, angels ascending and descending on the Son of God. He goes, wait till, wait till you see what's going to happen. You know, and here one angel came and touched him. There was no conversation, um, no consoling, no comforting. Uh, he didn't call him beloved son. Okay, the angel called Daniel beloved three times in in the book of Daniel that I've seen maybe more and you know that's it, it could be more um, but you're just like the angel called him beloved Daniel well Christ doesn't get any of that comfort in this place at this time so he's just being thrust away he we could call him the lost son now the lost son. The doors are being closed on him. Doors are being closed on him. If you've ever felt left out or kicked aside or ignored, well, it's being swallowed up right now in what Christ did. The disciples may have been able to hear him, but it wasn't recorded that they heard him. And uh, I have to reconsider that... Um, you know, the scripture of the high priest entering in once alone. The transaction took place between the father and the son in this garden. He, um, after the an angelic visitation, he was given strength in his physical body to endure. And then he began to sweat drops of blood. That's when he sweat the drops of blood and his blood he gave to the father. He poured his own blood here. And this, this arena, in this arena, nobody was watching. The disciples, as close as they were, no one was watching. Eye has not seen, ear has not heard, has not entered into the heart of man what God had prepared for those who love him. Could he be talking about this place? No eye heard, no human eye heard, no human ear heard. Christ in his agony. We just have a few little details, you know, that we can build, you know, build the, the case around. Um, Revelation 
the discovering of the mysteries of God. God makes it possible for us to know Him. Wow. He has stooped so low. He's actually, you know, who can be enthroned, who, who can be compared to the Lord our God? Psalm 113, the halal, that, that He sang on the night He was betrayed. Uh, Psalm 113, who can be compared to the Lord our God who is enthroned on high? Far below Him are the heavens and the earth. He stoops to look and He lifts the poor from the dirt and the needy from the garbage dump. And He sets them among princes, even the princes of His own people. I've walked on garbage dumps. Many of you here have come with us, walked on garbage dumps to love on the poor. And you see, he, he said to me, I've gone even further than that. I've gone beneath you, below you, to lift you up. You know, what, what sign will be given to this generation? Oh, oh, the sign of Jonah, the, the, the whale story. It's the whale story, it's the fish story. That's the sign you get. I'm like, what? Yeah, because pay attention. It's uh, when Jesus says, yeah, as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the whale, so shall the Son of Man be in the belly of the earth. That's the significance of that story. Go there, stay there, and interpret everything from that. Yeah, we, if Jesus talks about it, <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah, that serpent in the wilderness, as, you know, as Moses lifted up the serpent on the pole, so shall the Son of Man be lifted up. And it's the image of a curse. It's that image of a curse. So all of this, this is Jesus is facing this and he's knowing it's happening. You know, and I mentioned before, he's not naive, not naive Isaac. Where is the lamb? He's like, I am the lamb. I am the lamb. Everything up to this point was a dress rehearsal. Dress rehearsal. Israel rehearsing morning and night, sacrificing a lamb morning and night, every day, morning and night. Did, were they paying attention when he arrived on the scene? No, they missed it. Wow. Revelation is God coming to give himself away and to satisfy us with more and more knowledge of himself and to make that distance between us as short as possible. Jesus withdrew. Cheers. Oh, hello. Jesus withdrew in order to close the gap between humanity and the Father. And as we've heard, the union is, you know, our union being grafted into Christ in his, in his death. The tree we're grafted into is the cross. Okay, vine and branch. Union is, is not a new concept. Paul, Paul took it and filleted it out for us. Paul took up that which was lacking in Christ's suffering. And what was lacking? The explanation of the sufferings. The, the, the full explanation of what this suffering, what it means for humanity, what it means for those who believe. Pa Paul didn't add to Christ's sufferings. Wow. Certainly Paul suffered many things, but joyfully, gladfully, you know, willingly, you know, like what? Oh, you're breaking my heart. Do, you know, like they go, don't go, don't go, you're going to get hurt. So he goes, stop talking to me, you're going to break my heart. What are you doing? Like, get out of the earthly realm and get up into the heavenlies. Yeah. That's the Apostle Paul. Oh, my goodness. My goodness. That was not in my notes. <laughs> anyway, I did not see hello. <laughs> bless him, Lord. We might need to do a, a fire tunnel to bless all these people. So the angel was strengthening the great lost son. The father is forsaking him. Um, you know, he's sweating drops of blood. He goes back to his disciples. Do they notice? Do they notice? Has their eyes seen? What do they say? What is, what is, what happened? You, you know, he's sweating. He's got blood dripping on him. Do they notice? If they notice, it's not recorded for us. I think that's kind of interesting. Jacob experienced the angels ascending and descending. 
on him. Jesus experienced one angel at this moment. In the garden, he offered his uh, soul. And on the Golgotha, he offered his body. We could say from this moment on, he was given into the hands of men to do with as they pleased. It, it, the, the scripture says they came and laid hands on Jesus. Can you imagine? You know, I mean, that term, they laid hands on him and they, they, they took him, you know, and they took him and began to abuse him. You know, and just the abuse just never ended, you know, and you know, people are still abusing him, you know, and it's our privilege and joy now, you know, to let everything that he suffered for, to let it manifest within us, to, to receive the fullness of that suffering, um, accept his sufferings as your own own. Yeah. That's what it means to be, co, to be a co-sufferer. Romans 8, 17, that's the brilliant Dr. Brian Simmons. That's how he, you know, communicates that. It's, it's not you suffering, it's accepting Christ's sufferings as your own. Yeah. And I believe that that's true humility because there's just nothing for you to do. Right. Yeah. There is nothing for you to do. And that, that it could embarrass you, that could make you, no, you know, but no, you get on the other side and you're going to go, wow. 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 <laughs> so here, here the sleeping disciples, it's, it's folly. He tries to, you know, remind them many times to... You know, don't fall asleep and, you know, fall into temptation and that, you know, he's like, be aware, pay attention, look what's happening to me. And they just, you know, they couldn't, you know, and uh, the scripture had to be fulfilled. And these, I'm going to end with this. These are just some from Psalms, Isaiah, Zechariah, another Psalm, Psalm 22, 69, 34. He was, uh, became a worm. He was reproached. He was despised of men. He was spit on. He was smote. He was buffeted. He was put to death, death on a cross. He was buried. He was sold for 30 pieces of silver. He was betrayed by friends. He was struck as the great shepherd. Uh, the father was forsaking him. He suffered between two thieves. Uh, the garment... They cast lots for his garment. There's all prophesied. This was no mistake. This was no, all the details are there. So you and I could be clothed in Christ's righteousness. He, he, a whole garment. It, there's no parting of this garment of righteousness that Christ wore. It's a complete wardrobe for you and I, his bride. Uh, humanity gave him gall and vinegar on the cross and not a bone of his was broken. For, so for anyone here that feels like they're you know, in agony and a, some sort of self-crucifixion, well, we have good news for you. And we have a breaker anointing. And we're going to put you out of your misery. We're coming, going to break your leg. I'm going to break a your leg. Uh, yeah. You know, but here's the good news. If I come to break your leg, I can go, guess what? Guess what? I have good news for you. You're already dead. <laughs> you're already dead. That means you're out of your misery. If you would just get it, because you were crucified with him and not a bone of your body will be broken. Oh. Yeah, that's it. Cheers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> okay.